Good morning, everyone. Welcome this morning. Let's start off. Stand, smile, and turn to hymn number 111. Uh, 111. 111. Three ones.
I thank you, Father, for each one that you brought in here today. Pray that our hearts are open, ready to learn what you'd have us to do, that we would be victorious and, and glorifying you in all that we do. And we ask this for your son's sake. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And we'll turn over to hymn number 241. 241. Our great Savior. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this chance, Lord, to give back what you so generously blessed us with, Lord. And help us to give, give what our heart gives, Lord, what you have us. To help the missionary work here, the church here, to, this minute in Corvallis as well. To go forward, Lord, and you, you spread your gospel around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. I've been praying that the Lord would um, show me every night. I ask him to show me uh, what to do about my house. And um, because, you know, the sale fell through and everything. And the Lord has just shown me that I just need to stay there for now and not sell it. Because the insurance wasn't covering things and it just wasn't going well. So I'm just going to stay for now. definitely will show us the right way. Even if we try to fight it and go forward and on our own will, it will, it will stop it. It will close the doors. It will open what it needs and when it needs to be open. Yes. All right. Anybody else? Praises? Yeah. Scott? You know, um, the Lord has just shown me so much recently. As our children grow older, they realize that they need us even more. We've had so much communication with our son Jason of recent, and it's just it's just such a blessing to my heart Amen. to know that the Lord is working in his life. Because when he was in Afghanistan, he kind of walked away from the Lord for a while. 
and he's coming back, and he's, it's like he's craving to hear more and more about the Lord. Amen. And I just, Amen. Thank you, Lord. And he is going through some real struggles right now. Yeah, that's, that's always a blessing. We want to find that out too. Not with my side of the family so much, but more her side of the family. Like she said Wednesday night, but I am asking her. She knows our views. She knows we go to church. She's used to go to church. And she'll still call her mom and ask for her guidance. And she knows what her mom's going to say, even though it may not be something she wants to hear right away. But exactly. it's a blessing because you know in their heart and their soul and mind, they're still thinking about that. Still thinking about like whether that's this one. Yeah. And it's a blessing. All right, anybody else? Praises, prayer requests, announcements? We did see John visiting his retreat room. John was talking about it. Good. It's reminded them they want him in the fellowship here. Pray for him. Yeah, so. Amen. We'll keep praying for them. All right. Anybody else? If not, we'll go ahead and move on. Uh, Jean has one. My wife's sister has some issues going on. They think it might be cancer and, um, oh, throat cancer or something like that. Um, so anyway, um, they're not sure, but. Ben. Oh. What's her name? Betsy. 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 Uh, 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 bad. <laughs> I was letting Jean know I said it right, but I spelled it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All right, anybody else? Mm -hmm. Anything else? Anybody else thankful for? Uh, oh, is she? Oh, uh, and, yeah, she uh, lives in Eugene. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank thank you, Jude. You need to come every week and help me interpret. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if there's none else, then we'll go ahead and move on. All right, let's uh, turn over to hymn number 371. 371.
sing one more before Pastor comes with the message and the scripture reading this morning. We'll turn over to hymn number 350. 350. Saved by grace. to your church and, and, and by your spirit for Jesus glory that dear God that uh, your church would be edified please help us dear God fill my dear life with your spirit 
for laying the message in sign. Be with Brother Brian in the nursery this morning, fill him with your spirit. I thank you for the word that's gone forth already in the children's Sunday school hour, the adult Sunday school hour. Dear God, the songs of praise that I pray you've enjoyed as we've sung from our hearts. Offering we've given unto you, we ask your blessing as and have asked your blessing upon that. Oh Father, it's a wonderful, glorious thing to know you and worship you. To live for you and to know that one day we will see you face to face. And we'll be with you for all eternity. But dear God, we have things to do here right now while we wait. Uh, we are here to glorify your name. And I pray that you teach us, and strengthen us, enable us, increase our faith. Uh, Lord, that by your power we might do that. Father, bless all that's done here this morning. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. For his glory. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> so I've entitled the message this morning, What's Your Glory Story? Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, what are we going to glory in? We've seen uh, the two verses here uh, about God's glory. I appreciate your prayers as preparing this message. I was wondering uh, why it would seem to be so hard to prepare. There seemed to be so much resistance. Well, it's preaching on God's glory. <laughs> and uh, by the way, who can fully understand the wisdom of God? Who can fully understand the righteousness of God. Who can fully understand His glory? None of us can. So this lesson by will be a scratch on the surface, okay? Just a little speck uh, in the glory of God. And we'll be preaching that till we come, amen? And learn more about that probably uh, through all eternity. But uh, what is your glory story? And we want to be among those who who would glory in God. Uh, by way of introduction, uh, we see in verse 23 that we have a warning from God that the wise man is not to glory in his wisdom. The strong man is not to glory in his might. And the rich man is not to glory in, uh, in his riches. Now, uh, it is a fact that some people, in a sense, are wiser than others. I'm talking about earthly wisdom and IQ and such. Uh, some people have a higher IQ perhaps than others and uh, uh, wanted to get into the, you know, perhaps the big league colleges, Harvard and Princeton and Yale and, and all these things. And, and there are some people that are, in, in a sense, are smarter uh, than others as far as, uh, you know, as IQ goes. The world has made wisdom or education a god, pretty much. I was reading something that was interesting during that 2012-13 uh, school year. 149 colleges and universities here in the United States charged at least $50,000 per year for tuition fees and room and board. Uh, According to the last edition of the Chronicle of Higher Education's Almanac, uh, that's an additional 26 schools to cross the mark of $50,000 per year compared with the, the year before. I was reading another place, one school crossed the $60,000 mark uh, per, per year. But let not man glory in his wisdom. Uh, let not man what? Glory uh, in his might. We would have a tendency also to glory in our might. It's a fact that some people have more physical strength than others. By the way, why are these things not to be gloried in? If you have a higher IQ, if you have more strength, if you have uh, more riches, really, where'd you get where'd that come from? God gave it, didn't he? Yeah. And so, uh, why would we try to take credit uh, for, what, for what God has given? 
But people will glory in strength. Uh, we learn, you know, we have the Olympic Games, that continues. And, and of course, the Greeks and such uh, were great uh, proponents of that. There were those kind of games in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, the early starts in the, in the Apostles' era there. They, they knew about this, this sports type thing. This, this has been throughout history, uh, having that strength. Men admire strength. Uh, strength of you know of body to maintain carry out some settled purpose. And the young men who contended in the Grecian games gloried in their strength, and so did their kinsfolk and all the people who took pride in the land uh, that produced such people that, that were strong. You have a tendency to glory in strength. Uh, this year marks the uh, 40th World's Strongest Man competition. Anybody know who the world's strongest man is today? Interesting. I don't either. <laughs> I didn't bother to look it up. Okay. Uh, we probably know of one who made it as the world's strongest man one, at one time. His name was? Anybody know? Atlas. Atlas and I think, did Schwarzenegger make, yeah. make it once as well? And we hear it, I mean, and we just know that because of you know, entertainment and such and all that. Uh, but that strength. And let not man glory in his riches. Rich men would tend to glory in their wealth. And uh, they find that it, it serves well because it takes the place of wisdom and strength. You see, if you have wealth, you can just buy somebody's wisdom. <laughs> if you have wealth, you can just buy somebody else's strength and use that for what you want it for. And so we have a tendency as human beings to glory in those things. But we're warned not to do so. Why would that be? If you had a higher IQ than somebody, what, what might be the temptation to glory in that? You, you, we get what? We get proud, don't we? We get uh, uh, conceited. And uh, that comes out and uh, and it's not an, uh, it's not a beautiful thing to be uh, to be uh, conceited we need to be careful that we don't glory in wisdom or in strength or, or, or in our riches I graduated uh, Bible college in my class and I was the uh, salutatorian that's second in the class and uh, I have nothing nothing to, uh, to see Danny Schaefer was the valedictorian. He was first in the class. And I really have nothing to glory of. Anyone else who sat behind Danny Schaefer at the college could have done just what I did, okay? Uh, <laughs> but uh, we have nothing uh, to glory of, okay? Because uh, God gives us uh, our gifts <laughs> and whatever that might be. <laughs> Warned not to glory. Uh, what does glory mean? What's God talking about when He says when He says glory? Well, it has the idea of about, about swelling up inside of us. Uh, you know, it's that 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 pleasure, that that perhaps self satisfaction uh, in, in, in the human sense. Uh, so much so that it it, it almost needs to burst burst forth in words and expression. You know, just want to let the whole world know how strong I am, or how smart I am, or how rich I am. And uh, God says, be careful. Don't glory uh, in those things. Why? Because all those things are what? They're just temporal, aren't they? And by the way, if you have something, that, then where'd you get it? God gave it to you, didn't he? God gave it to you. We're not to glory in those things. By the way, how does human pride work? Would we glory in maybe... Maybe a higher IQ, maybe more strength, maybe more riches. What does that glory, that's that human glory say? I'm glorying because I'm better than you. It gets its glory by what? Putting other people down, doesn't it? See, to be glory in your strength, you're just saying, I am stronger than most people. You know, my age or whatever. Or I am wiser than most of those other people that are my age. Or I have more riches than most of the other people that were in that life. And for a human to glory in something that God's given requires the putting down of, of, of really the majority. Because that's what you're saying. I'm better than the majority in some way. 
And that is not becoming, is it? Uh, matter of fact, if, if that becomes the focus of our life, that's rather what? That's rather, uh, it drives people away, doesn't it? It's not a beautiful thing. And so God warns us about that. And, and, and it, will, it will lead us, it will lead us what, to, what to pride. And where does pride lead us? Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. You see, we don't realize it, but we get proud. Pride saying, come on, follow me. I'm taking you over here to destruction. Here's where we're going. That's where pride takes us. And so God says, don't be, be careful, don't glory in those things. Uh, 1 Peter uh, 1, 24, For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is a flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. Our glories fall away, don't they? 1 Corinthians 3, 21, the memory verse for today. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. God will give us all things that we need in Christ. And so we don't, we're not the glory of men. Whether well, therefore you eat or drink, whatsoever you do, what? Do all to the glory of God. Do all uh, to the glory of God. And so we are not, we are to seek glory in knowing God. Let him the glory, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, God says. And so we see that. What they talking about knowing God, uh, understanding him. Uh, well, it, it's having that personal relationship with Him. Uh, God said, I want people to glory in the fact that, that He knoweth me. It's interesting, that word knoweth. It's the same word in, in Proverbs 3, 6, it translated acknowledge. In all thy ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. God's saying, if you'll walk with me, you'll know me. Uh, and... Uh, Understanding, Job 28, 28 tells us what that is. Uh, he says, uh, he says unto man, God, behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil, what is understanding? And so we're challenged in this, in this, uh, to have this walk with God. Remember back in the 1990s, they had that movement, WWJD. Anybody, anybody remember what that means? What would Jesus do? Amen. <laughs> And that's, that's what ought to be the question of our life as we walk through this life. What would Jesus do? What would God have? What would Jesus have? What would God have to do for the glory of Christ? What would Jesus do? And so we are to seek a glory in knowing God. And first of all, we seek that because His delights are, are worthy of praise. We're going to look at some of the things that God delights in and see how they're worthy of praise. Uh, we consider, first of all, uh, his, 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 his loving kindness is worthy of praise. Uh, God said at the end of verse 24, For these things I delight in. What does he delight in? Uh, he says, I'm the Lord, in, in 924, I'm the Lord which exercised what? Loving kindness. I practice loving kindness, goodness, mercy, uh, favor. Isn't that a wonderful, uh, beautiful picture? You see, man's glory says, I'm better than you. I'm a cut above the rest. And what does loving kindness say? God says, I want to minister to you. I want to, I want to be kind to you. I, I want to reach out to you. You see, uh, God doesn't have... Men play the comparison game. God doesn't have to do that. There is no other God besides Him. He has the one to compare Himself with. That's what he says, rejoice, he says there, I am the Lord. That's that, 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 he, that, that Jehovah, the, the Yahweh, the self-existent one. He's the only God that ever existed. He has no, no one no one to compare himself with as far as being better or greater. He's the only God. And by the way, he's a great God. Isn't he? Yeah. he can't be improved upon. He's perfect. And yet that God, what did he do? He reaches out to us in loving kindness. Now there is something to glory in, amen. Yeah. There is something to glory in God who, who doesn't need us, so to speak, but reaches out in loving kindness to us that we might that we might be saved. Oh, so many scriptures uh, teach about that. Psalm 103, verse 10. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Uh, 
Psalm 103, the same Psalm, verse 13. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. What a wonderful God. Verse 14. He knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. God's merciful and pitiful uh, toward, towards us, providing that way of salvation. Loving kindness. I mean, how beautiful is the story of the Good Samaritan? Remember the parable, the parable of the Bible also about the rich man? He built his barns and filled them all up with all his goods. And then what did he say at the end of that story? I have much good laid up for many years. Take, I'll save my soul, take my knees, eat, drink, and be merry. How many of you think about that guy and say, mm, I want to be like that? That sounds really noble and virtuous. And did that, that thought come to anybody's mind? That's what the world treats as rich, treats rich like sometimes. Like it's all about to live for. But what about the Good Samaritan? We don't know how much money that guy had. The priest that went by, he wouldn't help the poor guy that was laying half dead along the road. The Levite that went by, he wouldn't help the poor guy. But the Samaritan, what does he do? He walks over him and Pours some oral wine into his womb, takes care of him, puts him on his own donkey. Takes him into town to a motel. Says, you take care of him. By the way, if you do anything else, put that on my bill. How many of you think that's appealing? That's appealing, getting it? That's a beautiful story. That's something that deep down in our hearts that we want to emulate, isn't it? That's true riches. That's the way God is. That loving kindness. In a loving kindness, Jesus came, my soul in mercy to reclaim. And from the depths of sin and shame, through grace He lifted me. From sinking sand, He lifted me with tender hands. kindness. Hey, His loving kindness is worthy of praise. Uh, that's why uh, we ought to glory in Him. And then, what does it talk about? Uh, uh, you know, man's glory, we have to put others down. God says, I'm going to reach out to you. Uh, and then we all, what else do we see that uh, is worthy of glory? His judgment. His wisdom, so to speak, is worthy of glory. Don't let man glory His wisdom. But we glory in God's wisdom and God's judgment. Uh, uh, is, is the word used there. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 20, Daniel uh, uh, said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and what might are His. Wisdom belongs to God. If there's any true wisdom, where did it come from? God. And so we glory in God's wisdom. We look to His wisdom. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1.25 The foolishness of God is wiser than man. If God could be foolish, uh, Brother Dennis called all this recently, if God could be foolish, then that foolishness of God would still be wiser than man. It's kind of the Bible's way of saying, I'm not sure I can explain to you just how wise God is, you all being humans, <laughs> and being what He made. I'm not, I'm not sure you understand that. I'm not, I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit has a southern accent or anything like that, okay? But uh, I'm not sure. Wisdom. Uh, God knows everything. Matthew 6 8. Jesus talks about those who worry about their needs and all that. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. God knows everything. He knows everything. That's why James 1 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, where did he go? Let him ask of God. They give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Where did he go for wisdom? You go to God. Why? Because he has it all. <laughs> There's nothing wiser than God. We can, can comprehend the wisdom of God. Our wisdom certainly fades uh, in the light of God's wisdom. And, uh, and, and, and we see that. Five guys were on a plane. A little boy, a preacher, 
a doctor, the pilot, and a lawyer. The pilot came on the intercom and said, Mayday, Mayday! We're going down and there are only four parachutes on the plane. You can decide who's staying, but I'm jumping now. And so the pilot grabs one of the shoot parachutes and jumps out. The doctor said, I've saved, I've, I've saved lives my entire life, so I think that I should get one. He grabs one and jumps out of the plane. The lawyer said, I'm the smartest man in the world and have won hundreds of cases, so I should get one. He grabs one and jumps, he grabs and jumps out too. The preacher went to the little boy and he said, I've lived a long, happy life, and I know I'm going to heaven. So you take the last parachute and go. Little boy said, no, you can take this one. I'll take the other one. The smartest man in the world just jumped out with my backpack. <laughs> That's where man's wisdom will take us sometime, amen? That's right. <laughs> By the way, you look up the smartest man in the world, whose face do you think will appear first on the very first Google line? Stephen Hawking. <laughs> His face will appear. By the way, smartest man in the world, according to Stephen Hawking, uh, he's an astrophysicist studying space and all that such and has some great theories about black holes and such, I guess. But he says the Earth will last only 100 more years. Oh, that could be true. God may end it before then, you know. Uh, but then he says, we must find another place to live. There's the smartest man in the world for you, okay? Uh, that, that, that's where worldly wisdom will take us, all right? God says, no, look, look beyond whatever I, I, I've given you naturally. God says, look to my, my judgment, my wisdom. God does that. What else is, is praiseworthy uh, of looking to God? By the way, glory has the idea that praise, uh, uh, praising God for all these things and not pra praising ourselves. Uh, well, His righteousness. We praise Him for His righteousness. We, he says, let not the rich man glory in his riches. God's righteousness is like riches. I'll uh, explain to you, you know, what, what I'm saying here. You see, why does the rich man seek riches? Because he believes that, that, that the riches will give him what? Security and assurance. With those riches, he'll be able to meet all his needs of life. But according to the Bible, you know what gives security and assurance? Righteousness. That's, what, that's, what, that's the only thing that gives true security and assurance. So in that sense, righteousness is riches. And, and God's riches. By the way, the things that rich men trust in, they, they, they think they'll get that, that security and that assurance, but it doesn't bring it. Proverbs 23, 5. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Whoop! Something happens and they're gone. Just like that. But you know what doesn't fly, what doesn't fly away? Well, the riches fly away. Uh, Paul wrote in, in 1 Timothy 6.6 6, uh, about riches. We brought nothing into this world and it is what? Certain! We can carry nothing out. Matter of fact, the Bible calls material riches uncertain wealth. The only thing that is certain is we'll lose them one day. We can't, we can't leave with them. So, so Paul says in 1 Timothy 6, 17, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. <laughs> but trust in who? Trust in God. Uh, his righteousness is indeed true riches. By the way, you can't leave here with your wealth, can you? But you know what you can leave here with? God's righteousness. Amen. Amen. And I want to tell you something. That's true wealth. Because all the wealth in the world won't, 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 won't buy you an entrance into heaven. But if you leave here with God's righteousness on your life, you're going. Amen. Amen. And by the way, that's not... Right, 
righteousness you got by being a good person. That's righteousness you got by trusting in Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. You got that right by faith and by faith alone. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For He, God, hath made Him, Jesus Christ, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made, what? The righteousness of God in Him. I'm so thankful that I trust in Jesus Christ to be my Savior. I receive the riches of imputed righteousness. And guess what? When I leave this world, it's going with me. Amen. I'm taking it with me. And I have that assurance. And that's why Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God. What does the rich man think his riches will bring? Peace and assurance. Oh, no. No, no, no. It, it starts with the free righteousness that God gives when you trust in Jesus Christ. That's where your peace starts. That's where your assurance starts. And by the way, it continues on earth for the believer through your trials as what? You yield to God. And as we begin by God's Spirit to walk in practical righteousness, we have peace. The believer comes into a hard trial, you know, who's been backslidden, you know, for half, for half, for half, for perhaps for months. What are, what, are they, what are they forfeit by being backslidden? Their peace. Well, I'm not sure this thing's going to work out. I, I don't know, this is a trial or, or, or a chastisement from, you know, from, from a backslide, whatever. They lose that peace. They forfeit that. But God says we we keep a short a short confession list, amen. First John 1 9. Keep keep that list short and walk with God. What do we have? We have that peace that passes all understanding. And uh, and it just keeps that, that wonderful assurance uh, that that brings. Isaiah 32 17. The work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, a quietness and assurance forever. <laughs> Money can't do that. But God's righteousness can. Walking with God can. That's riches. Uh, you see, if we glory in our riches, what do they become? They become idols, don't they? Just like our wisdom. Or just like the human wisdom. Or just like whatever, whatever it might be. Uh, 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 our strength. We would, that would become an idol if we glory in that. We see that when things, these things are submitted to God, they're used to whatever gifts God's given us, then He can use them for His glory. Think about Solomon. He had great riches and wealth, didn't he? And you know what? He started out good. With that great riches and wealth, but looking at God's glory. Remember his prayer? I'm just a little child. What can I do by myself? He had no trust in himself. And, he, and, and God gave him what? Uh, wisdom and, 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 and riches. What did he do? He built that great temple to worship God. Built uh, Israel into the greatest kingdom it had ever been with that riches and wealth that God had given him. But later in his life, what happened? He turned away from God, didn't he? Even though he had that gift of riches and that gift of wisdom, he was no longer seeking to glorify God with that. He was doing what he wanted to do. And he married this woman and that woman and had all these concubines and all this. And what did he do? He invited them into Jerusalem and married them and made temples for all their false gods. It has the same riches and the same wealth. But what now? He's looking at it. It's my riches and my wealth. And I'm going to do this for this wife and this for this. And now he's using it what? For his own glory. For what he thinks is right. And what happened? He built all those temples. His wives turned his, turned his heart away. Remember that? And you know, it was the next generation. His son, Rehoboam, was king. And Egypt came and sacked that temple. And took all those riches out. It wasn't even a generation away. And Solomon and, and, and that, great, that great city was, was defeated. And, conquered. and then we had to what? The split kingdom. Rehoboam only got, you know, the, the two tribes. And, and, uh, and, and, uh, and Israel became the rest. What a sad thing. Why? Because Solomon got his eyes off of God. By the way, he wrote Ecclesiastes. One said, well, how was Solomon when he was thinking about worldly things? Just read Ecclesiastes. Oh, this is all vain. I tried to find a, you know, pleasure in, in, in music and building and, and you know, in, in singing and the arts. I tried it and everything he says, and I just came up empty. 
And then he wound up to the end. What does the whole duty of man just do? Obey God and keep his commandments. Glorify God. I got to get back to this. Probably what he's saying. <laughs> As he's writing that. Uh, what a wonderful thing. Uh, God's, God's wisdom. Uh, these things, we get prior to those things, they become, a, it's an offensive thing. It's not an attractive thing. It actually drives people away. One wealthy businessman was very angry, and his wife began spouting off. If it wasn't for my money, that nice car sitting out there in the driveway wouldn't be here. That big screen TV in the living room wouldn't be here. Those nice new appliances in the kitchen wouldn't be here. When he got done spouting off, his wife uh, commented when he got done, you're not telling me anything. If it wasn't for your money, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We get pride in those things. It improves those relationships, doesn't it? And we also look to God. Why? Because of His strength. Look what the Scripture says here in uh, in Jeremiah nine uh, twenty uh, four. But let him that glorieth glory in this, the understandeth and knoweth me, and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exerciseth all these things. I am the God that does all of these things. God says, this is what I do. And by the way, I love doing it. I delight in these things. What God? What is God talking about? He's talking about, this, this is his strength here. You see, if God says he's going to do it, he's going to stop him, amen? Who's going to, you know, if God's going to do it, uh, he, he's going to do it. That idea of exercise, to, to do, to fashion, to accomplish, to make, uh, to produce, uh, to deal with, to prepare. God takes care of business, amen? amen. By his strength, and by his power. God gets the job done. 1 Corinthians 1.25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and what? The weakness of God is stronger than men. God says, for you glory in your strength, my weakness is stronger than you. Now, we have in glory in his strength, amen. And you know what's wonderful? When we look to God and glorify him, then the riches that we do have is used for him. Then whatever strength that we do have is used for him. Then whatever wisdom we do have is submitted to his wisdom. And it all becomes beneficial uh, in the way that God wants it to. And they don't become idols. But we lose the best if we think that, you know, that, that we're all that. And something that God has given us is something that, that makes us better than another human being. We lose that. We lose that. God has strength. John 14, 13 and 14. Jesus said, Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. That's a pretty big statement. That will I do. And that makes it even bigger. <laughs> that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask what? Anything in my name. I will do it. Jesus says, if it's according to my name, it's according to his will, not, not just the end of prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. No, that's not fully prayed in Jesus' name. Something that God wants to do in your life, you learn you, as you walk with God, you, we learn to we don't we don't when we learn to pray, we don't learn to try, we don't, we're not trying to convince God to provide our will. We are trying to learn how to pray for his will. And when we do that, we will see nothing stands in the way of God. Nothing. Whatsoever. Jesus, I'll get it done. And, uh, and so we ask. God gets it done. Isaiah 40, 30. Even you shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, what? Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Uh, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God has the strength. Paul realized in 2 Corinthians 12, 10, for when I am weak, then am I strong. He realized when he got into places where he didn't know how it was going to work out, he didn't know how in the world he could go on another day. 
He fell on his face before God. Then what did he find? He found all the strength he needed. And that's the way you and I can be. Uh, that's why we glory in God's strength. It's so much greater than ours. Think about man's strength when submitted to God's glory. Think about those mighty men of David, that list. I won't go through it all, but remember, one man, you know, one man in a battle, you know, he's slaying, you know, a thousand of the enemy. One man standing on a piece of ground and, and just, you know, slaying hundreds and hundreds, what? For the glory of God. That's an amazing thing. Under the will of God, glorifying God. Think about Samson's strength. Isn't that a sad story? What? That's, that was, was it great strength? Oh, yeah, it was, but what? What a waste, amen? I'm sure God, God didn't get much glory out of the fact that when Samson went down into town, I went into a harlot's house, and they surrounded the town to get it, and he took those gates they had, uh, on his shoulders and dragged the gates up to the top of the mountain. Woo! Yay, Samson! What did that prove? God didn't want him in there with a harlot in the first place, did he? And it, and it just became, his strength became a frustration to his brethren in Judah. Remember, he went and killed a bunch of Philistines in one place, and I uh, think burnt their fields down. And, and the Philistines, the enemies came up, and, and his own family uh, in, in, in Judah and Israel and said, What are you doing? Don't you the Philistines reign over us? And Samson said, Okay, okay if you, I'll, you can turn me over there, Paul, you, you promise not to kill me. Remember that? They did that. A lot of his strength wasn't used to glorify God. And it was a sad story. It's a much happier story when, when we're looking at, to God's strength. Then He can use our strength and, and, and at what little we have. Uh, and then finally, glory to God. Uh, we saw that uh, God, God's delights are worthy of praise, all those things that He delights in. And then secondly, God's dear children are workers in praise. We are workers in praise. It is what we do in our lives is to glorify God, to lift Him up, to praise His name. Uh, look what the, it says in verse 24 here. God says, I am the Lord who is exercised of loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness. Where? In the earth. In the earth. How does He do that? Through His people. Whoa. Did you hear me? That strength we just talked about, God says, through you. That wisdom he talked about, God said, through you. Uh, that loving kindness he talked about, God said, through you. How's that? By means of his Holy Spirit. And who bought that right for us? Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, if I didn't go to the Father, the Spirit would not come unto you. But I'm going. Proof that I get there is going to be when your heart is sealed with that Spirit. I'm going to send them out. And only he can do that. Only he can do that. But He has done it. Amen. And His Spirit is here. And so, Psalm 145 uh, says this in verse 10. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. Listen to what they glory in. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power to make known to the sons of men His mighty acts and the glorious majesty of His kingdom. That's what we do. 2 Corinthians 6, 16. What did God say at the end of the verse? God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Amen. Amen. And, and Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says what? We are His workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So all thy works shall praise thee. We're His works. Where is workmanship? God says, you focus on glorifying me. And I'll also use whatever gifts I've given you. We don't focus on glorifying him. Those very things that we that gifts that he has given us become our own prison. Because we're worshiping ourselves in a way. In a way that we have no right to. And they become our own prison. That pride that leads, that leads to destruction. Thank God we have such a wonderful mighty God. Uh, and we are to what? Uh, whatsoever we do to all what? To the glory of Him. The glory of God. So uh, what's the story? 
uh, of your glory. Amen. Uh, we glory. I had, I had a close this thought. I had, I've had a guy that uh, once I come into work and I, I talked I talk to him. We talked about spiritual things. He's he's uh, not in the church and those kind of things. But uh, once a while, I mean, I'll say, well, what's your claim to fame today? And that's, and that's yeah, ever, ever, I had to ask that at the out of the day. And I thought about that. And I told you, my only claim to fame is I've trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Uh, that's, that's, that's the only, only thing. That, 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 that's what I would put forward. If you want to know something I've done, I've trusted Jesus as my Savior. Uh, that's, what, that, that's the only claim to fame that I have. And, he, and, he, and even that couldn't have happened if God wasn't drawing me. Uh, God is to be glorified and we'll find all that we need to seek and glorify Him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank You so much uh, for all that You've done. You are a wonderful, mighty, loving, wise, powerful God. You've given us so much. And Jesus Christ is the testimony of your wonderful love to us. And Father, we do thank you and praise you for your precious Son. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the suffering on our behalf uh, coming unto us that, that, we, that you might bear the sins of the whole world. We might simply trust in you and be counted righteous. Trust in you and be forgiven, given a home in heaven. Oh God, we do thank you and praise you for that. And I pray that you would help us to, to spend the rest of our lives with your praise and your glory uh, on our hearts and, and, and that ready to show forth uh, every opportunity that you give, whether it be from our lips uh, or from our fingertips, dear God, uh, that we might speak of your glory and praise your name. Oh, God, help us to be faithful in that. Be careful to thank you and praise you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Glory. Amen. Amen. Charles, you come and close us this morning. Yes, sir. All right, please stand. And we'll turn over to hymn number 481. 481. Just as I am. Amen.
thank you. We thank you for your love, Lord, for allowing us to come as well, Lord. We thank you for what you used, used your word for today, Lord, as you brought to us to teach us, to guide us, to be a shield before us as we go out these doors today, Lord, watch over us. Help us and guide us in all we can do, we need to do for you, Lord, as well, because we can't do it on our own. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.